What if I told you a TV show saved somebody's life? I want to tell you about a TV show that kept a man off death row. But before we do that, you know what we have to do. Don't pretend like you don't know. You know we need to serve the algorithm. Please subscribe for more true crime, weird history, paranormal, and haunted videos. Give this video a like, and if there's a case or a story you'd like me to do a video on, let me know in the comment section below. Especially if it's not in Southern California because we are back in Southern California. And before we go into Southern California, there are hundreds of episodes of true crime, weird history, paranormal, and haunted on the podcast I co-host, Ghost Town. The link is in the description. And you can binge it, because I know you like to binge. That's probably the most I've used the word binge ever. So in May 2003, 16-year-old Martha Puebla was shot to death on the doorstep of her home in Sun Valley, California. There was only one eyewitness, and that eyewitness fled out of fear for their life. But in their rush to leave, the crime scene left their cell phone. From the cell phone, they found the owner, and the eyewitness provided a description that matched Juan Catalan. Now, just a few days before that, Martha Puebla had testified in court that were allegedly committed by her ex-boyfriend, Jose Ledesma, and Juan Catalan's brother, Mario. So the police had a theory that Juan Catalan, in retaliation for Martha testifying about Juan's brother Mario, that he was the one that committed the crime, although she never actually identified the alleged suspects in court. So technically, in this case, Juan Catalan would have had to guess that she's the one who identified his brother in court. So Catalan was arrested and questioned, and he said he had nothing to do with the murder, had no idea what they were talking about, but could not provide an alibi, and he couldn't recall his whereabouts. So he remained in custody, but talking to his girlfriend, she reminded him that he was at a Dodgers game, and he was watching the game with his six-year-old daughter. So his girlfriend still had the tickets, but that wasn't enough to provide an alibi. So Catalan's attorney, Todd Melkin, contacted Sam Fernandez, the senior vice president of the Dodgers, just asking to see all the video footage from that night's game, to see if Juan Catalan showed up on video. So after hours and hours and hours of combing through all this footage, they did find one but the resolution was really low, and again, not really enough to establish an alibi. But then Catalan remembered that a TV production was filming something right outside the section he was sitting in. So his lawyer found out that the HBO show Curb Your Enthusiasm, anyone, anyone, was actually filming episode six of season four. And just to give you an idea what the episode was, and you may be familiar with it, it's a very popular show, it's a very good show, it's a show that I tried to get into so many times, and I was like, this, I can't, I can't handle Larry David. I can't, I think he's funny, and I think he's, I mean, he's the co-creator of Seinfeld. There was just something about the show that I could not get into. And then in the last couple of years, I just forced myself to get into it, and it's amazing, more or less. How is that relevant to any of this? It's not at all. You're just getting to know me a little bit better. No? Not interested? Okay, that's fine. I get it. Just to give you some context, I will give you a rundown of the episode. Season 4, Episode 6, The Carpool Lane. Marty Funkhauser's dad dies, but decides that he will still use his Dodgers season tickets at an upcoming game that Larry wants to attend. Cheryl surprises Larry with tickets, but he's been called for jury duty, so he makes a racist comment during the jury selection to get out of it. He buys marijuana for his father, who has glaucoma. Larry fears being late to the game and picks up a prostitute named Monina to use the carpool lane. You know that old trick, you need to use a carpool lane, so you solicit a prostitute. It's classic. They are seen together at the game by two men who interviewed Larry and Cheryl for admission to a country club after the game. Marty puts on Larry's jacket and is arrested for the marijuana possession. Larry, Monina, and his father then smoke Monina's supply together. Larry comes forward on Marty's behalf and appears before the same judge who oversaw his jury selection. As a reminder, this episode helped keep a man off death row. So, you know what I mean? These are the scales of justice. I don't know. And after viewing the footage that day, because if you've been to uh, pretty much any baseball game, but Dodger Stadium, I've been to a bunch of times, mostly see concerts, sometimes to see Dodgers games that I went to for free, because it was like some kind of weird free work thing or whatever, and it's great. I live relative, as where I am right now is relatively close to Dodger Stadium. But there's a lot of footage, a lot of things to cover in case you don't want to miss anything. So even though there's a lot of people, there's a pretty good chance that they're going to have footage of Catalan. And they did, heading back from the concession stand to their seat, clear as day, right there.
case closed. Not really, not yet. But the state is still trying to make their case. And time-wise, he could have been at the game, committed the murder, gone back, so it wasn't exactly airtight, at least according to the timeline of when the murder happened and when he allegedly committed it. So it's looking better, good. But what really sealed the deal was a phone call that Catalan made from Dodger Stadium at a time where he could not have committed the murder and been at the game at the same time. The judge dismissed the case and he was released. So what happened to Juan Catalan after this ordeal? Because it's tough, even if you're somebody that was accused of something, you found out you didn't do it, there's still a possible and probable stigma around you. If you do a Google search, your name shows up, and chances are, at least at that time, 2004, 2005, it's probably mostly going to be the criminal aspect of this whole thing for Juan Catalan. In 2007, Juan Catalan got a $320,000 settlement from the city of Los Angeles and the police force. He was the subject of a Netflix documentary called Long Shot. It was like any other day, but as soon as I opened the door, I was completely surrounded, like SWAT style. My daughter, she looks up and she says, Dad. I told him, I'm gonna get you out of here. I asked him, do you remember where you were? I was at the Dodgers game. I gotta find the holy grail of Juan's defense. I need to place my client at Dodger Stadium on that night. Juan remembered they may have been filming something there that day. An episode was that I picked up a hooker in the carpool lane and took her to Dodger Stadium. So when you're watching a TV show or maybe a YouTube video, like maybe this one or one of my many other videos that you could check out right after this and never stop watching them, it'll keep you safe. That is not a guarantee at all. So if you want some more true crime, weird history, paranormal, haunted, check out some of these videos. Why not? What do you have, what do you have better to do? A lot? Oh, okay, that's fair.